Hey there. I definitely have some conspiracy theories. I normally didn't want to share them, but I feel I might as well. I'm not saying these things are absolutely happening, but they are some theories that I have. And I'm not saying that these things are absolutely the answer, but these are some things that I think about quite a bit. So, I'm going to start with some things that sort of back up some of my other statements. So, the way we can get rid of some of the toxic market and toxic culture behind street drugs is by legalizing drugs. The way we can get rid of high crime rates in the long run is to improve the situations for those who feel disenfranchised. Getting tougher on crime, alone anyway, is not going to decrease the crime rate, at least not in any significant way. It will simply increase the number of people in prison. And the United States already has a problem in that area. The United States already has more people in prison than any other country. This is based on both percentages and just sheer numbers. So what I've just stated also applies to terrorism across the globe and terrorism in the United States. There is no war that we can have, nor destruction of an entire population, that's going to stop terrorism. Just the act of wiping out that particular population will create more terrorists. And we can't stop terrorism from happening even within the United States, not via any of the ways that have been talked about. This is an unfortunate truth. We could have draconian rules and checkpoints and roadblocks and pat-downs and portable x-ray machines everywhere. And we could stop Muslims from coming into the country. And that still isn't going to stop the type of terrorism we've been seeing. In fact, as we become more locked down as people out of those draconian acts, those draconian laws, our government would become more brutal in other countries, which would increase terrorism, which would create more terrorists. We could feasibly become complete isolationists, remove ourselves from the rest of the world. We could do what is necessary so we can have the ability to not have to care whether we trade with the rest of the world, but we would surely fall behind the rest of the world as a result and would eventually be living in the past. The unfortunate truth is something that people don't want to look at. And most people will look at this kind of truth as, well, it's the end of the world. Well, no, not really, but the way we stop terrorism is to completely eliminate the need for terrorism. And this is done by having a primarily one world government that is able to meet the needs of all people everywhere, at least as much as possible. And I say primarily because there will always be countries or geographic regions that don't want to be part of the world grid, that do not care to trade with nor have any relations with the rest of the world. This kind of thing would entail a global resource and wealth redistribution policy, which would also at the same time ensure that the entire world does what it can to reduce emissions. So we actually have more of a chance of surviving in the distant future. This would also entail the dissolving of all borders, except for the geographic regions that want to be away from the world grid. And if those places that want to be off the world grid don't come to environmental standards, strict environmental standards, they will most likely be bullied. If we were to still have a currency system, it would be a new system altogether. Everyone will eventually lose their ability to speak negatively about cultures and beliefs other than their own. So those of you who find freedom of speech important, well, find it important while you can. Also, our concept of wealth will dramatically change. Most people will probably be forced to become vegetarians or even vegan, and I can't say I'm that happy about that. The thing that's terrifying about this for most people, that's terrifying about the idea of a one-world government or a mostly one-world government, 
is the idea that we have no control over any of it at all. I don't find that terrifying. What I find terrifying is what would happen during the process of this change. Just as I am terrified of the idea of, let's say, if we switched over to a fully libertarian philosophy, uh, yeah, the amount of starvation, poverty, absolute misery everywhere would be terrible during that process. But I'd have more faith in a world government type of thing that is all about uh, wealth redistribution globally and resource distribution globally than I do with the patterns of what our current system is becoming, as well as the similar systems in other countries in the capitalist system in other countries. I mean, with all these things that we would have to do to fix our broken system, and the things that would have to be done to fix the systems in other countries, capitalism as we know it is crumbling. And as technology improves, it's going to be crumbling even more. Jobs for humans are going to become pretty scarce. I think intelligent, powerful politicians can see this. And I think they're trying to reduce harm and damage as much as they can, at least until another system is put into place. Most people are already well aware that our current system will fail. It's not an issue of if, it's an issue of when. The world is going to change dramatically, and it could be within our lifetimes. And a lot of people are going to be hurting in that process. A lot of people are going to die in that process. The United Nations needs the United States in order to implement these changes. They need the United States to truly get this ball rolling. I will leave a link in the description bar to the official United Nations document created in 1992 that addresses these things. I've seen these documents many, many times in the past and just thought of it as, well, that's something that's never going to be able to be implemented. But during especially this current administration, in the Obama administration, I'm seeing more and more signs that we could actually be heading in that direction. That the United States could be eventually on board with that type of plan, even if it's a different plan than that particular plan. The concepts for this were codified before the Bill Clinton administration. There are rumors that Bill Clinton and George Bush Jr were aware of this sort of thing and were in support of this sort of thing, but these claims are all unsubstantiated, and they may as well just be something from Alex Jones, because that's what, that's what type of sources usually try to say this is the case. So it's not really worthwhile to shove forth that Bill and George were a part of this sort of thing. I mean, you could think about it, but it just doesn't seem to be a feasible thing. There's, there's not enough proof in any way to shove this forth. But Obama really started getting the ball rolling on this, or at least he pushed the ball to move faster. This can be seen particularly in his latest speech to the UN, and this can be seen in what was done with the internet on October 1st when it comes to domain names. And yes, I understand that the domain names thing may not be as big of a deal as it seems, but I still think it's a pretty major thing. And I think Hillary could potentially be the one to finish this job and to flip this switch at the UN to get the ball rolling. This can especially be seen in some of her speeches more recently where she seems to be supporting the type of globalism that could facilitate this type of thing. And I don't mean just trade globalism, you know. Any way you look at it, you know, let's hope that the human race is able to survive.